A blowout in the ACC as Miami takes down the Seminoles big time. We've talked about Florida State so far this year. I think they're being one of the most disappointing teams in the nation. Uh, I think when we talked preseason yeah. ACC this year, I think we had them a lot higher than uh, I guess many because we thought they were going to be a little a little decent this year. That is not the case. They are now currently seven and fourteen. As for Miami, before we dig into this, I think we got to say it. Say it now. I know you're going to probably get to it. But Steve, you called this team overrated at the beginning of the season, and that is obviously not the case. This team is now a top 20 team, 16 and four. They are looking fantastic in the ACC, which I do think is a down year in the ACC this year. I will say that even though they're looking good in this conference, it's a down year for the ACC. But they're currently seven, seven and three. They're in third place in the conference, just behind Clemson and Virginia. That's just an odd three to talk about when you're thinking ACC basketball. But yeah, Clemson, Virginia, Miami, and then Pitt in your top four right now in the ACC. Like I said, a down year for the ACC. But Miami is finding a way to win ball games, 16 and four. They are now 11 and 0 at home. That is absolutely huge as they are about halfway through conference play. I'm going to hand it over to you. What's your thoughts about Miami and your thoughts about this blowout win? Well, again, I, I you know, I, I guess I need to once again apologize for the <laughs> overrated chance. Though, though it is helping my standing, you know, in the uh, dopes on YouTube rankings. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm catapulting. The ratings are through the roof. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm up into the top 10. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, I have a bullet. You know, if, if this is the billboard charts, I have a bullet right next to me there. Nice. I'd be in good shape. But no, I mean, what's happened to Florida State is what I thought was going to happen to Miami, where you have all this talent and they're just not gelling and yeah. they're going to be up and down and up and down and up and down. Miami just keeps getting better. I mean, all of their starters tonight were in double figures. And not just like barely, they were in double figures. You know, so I mean, nobody was over 20. I don't I don't think I saw that. No, no. two or 18, Pack and Wong. Mm -hmm. Right, Pack and Wong. And then, man, Wong, boy, he's, he's going to be nice. a fun bench player someday in the NBA. He's not going to be a starter, he's not going to be an all-star, but he's going to be one of those guys that comes off the bench. Good and role just player. Yeah, and it puts up sneaky numbers, you know, down the road. But, you know, Miami, they're getting the job done on the boards. They're getting, I mean, they certainly can shoot. I still wonder, are they, will they – become in, more inconsistent again because I think early in the year they were a little bit inconsistent you know from the floor but I mean I have what was the last bad game Miami has played I, I was trying to go through it in my mind uh, I can't think of the last I don't think they've had a bad game since the, the, the new year yeah, right at the beginning of the year, they lost by six to Georgia Tech you could call that maybe a bad game because they didn't play as well as they should have but I mean, they do have a couple of losses in between that. They did lose to Duke, but it was a close game. I don't say that. I don't right. think that was a bad game. They lost to NC State in overtime. Again, not a bad game. Bad game, right? Uh, and they played great against Syracuse. They played fantastic, obviously, against Florida State here. So I would, if I had to go back, I'd say Georgia Tech. But you could go even farther than than that if you really wanted to to find a, a worse loss. Um, but I mean, honestly, not many, not many at all. Uh, you know, the Maryland Maryland loss at the beginning of the season. That's when Maryland was hot. So, I mean, yeah, I guess I would say the Georgia Tech loss at the beginning of the year uh, on the fourth is probably their worst loss of the year. That's not a bad loss. Uh, it's it's their worst, but not a terrible one, Steve. Yeah, Georgia Tech, I think, has been better than a lot of people thought. I mean, again, they're not going to be a force, or go or be, you know, unless they win the ACC tournament and the way the ACC conference right. has yeah, been going so far. I know, but, but I mean, who knows the way the things are going right. in this conference this year. Uh, but, I mean – I think when they played Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech was kind of on a, a mini roll of their own there in that little time frame there. Uh, I, my question is for you, Christian. Yeah, cause I'm curious. I mean, I, I know in my mind who I think the, the team MVP is, but uh, who who is the Hurricanes MVP right now? I'm so glad you asked me that question because this is the perfect segue for me to bring up how excited I am. And I think I've already talked about him already so far this season, but he deserves credit again. No, nor Chad or Mir has been the, I think he is the MVP of this team and not, not maybe by the points or by his stats, but just right. being the most important player on that squad, him coming over. And I think I've, I'm going to stand tall on this. And if you think that I'm wrong, if you think that there's a better one out there, let me know, please. I'd love to hear the argument. I don't think there is a better transfer coming into a power five school 
than the former Sunbelt player of the year in Omir. What he has done so far for the Hurricanes has just been absolutely incredible. Adding him with Pack, adding him with Wong, those three have been very good, and it's proving why they are so good in the ACC right now. This is a team that if they continue this pace, even if they lose a couple games in conference, when they get to tournament, uh, I'm not betting against them. We saw them go pretty deep last year. I think this team is better than what we saw last year of Miami. Yeah. Oh, no, I agree. And and, and again, I mean, I, people that have watched me talk about Miami and us talking about it are going to say, oh, sure, sure. Get on the bandwagon now. I'm not getting on the bandwagon. I'm not saying, oh, Miami is going to be a Final Four team now, but they are better than uh, a lot of people thought they were. Now, I know you were you were pretty high in them early on, Christmas. So I got I got to give a nod to you on that one. You, you, you really saw something in this team that I did not. And right from the beginning, you were saying, Omir is the key. You know, this is the key guy. And as, as I'm mumbling here and bumbling, I was trying to go through my brain to think of a player that I can bring up and say, Oh, he was a much more impactful transfer portal guy. And I well, I've tried. Yeah, I've tried. I can't find one. I would love to hear an argument or a debate because I mean, I might be missing somebody, but the, the I think only, he is only, the guy. The only think guy I could think of is the kid from Creighton, but he hasn't been he hasn't been very consistent. So all right, so night in, night out, as as far as I mean, he is the stabilizer on this roster. Somehow oh. he keeps things in control. This team is playing a disciplined style. And it, it shouldn't shock you because of who coaches them, but still at times on the floor, you could see the, I think the players were kind of like, Oh no, no, I'm going to force the issue. Amir really has changed that dynamic. And he's really brought a calming sense to this team as intense a player as he is. And he's a pretty intense player. He does keep things calm from the sense that it is manageable. It is controllable. Okay, you know, we're still in this game. We can stay in this game. We can stay ahead. He is that guy that just seems to, I hate the thing, the glue, but he really has brought all the the, the rather diverse talent on this roster together. And when he's not on the floor, it's an entirely different team. During the ACC preview, if we go back to that, I mentioned when we talk about Miami is this team is very good at playing their own game, but playing against the other team's strengths. And what I mean by that is this team is not big by any size means whatsoever. They play a lot of small ball, but they find ways to fill in the gaps. And I think that they did a good job in the transfer process in competing against whatever they had to in the ACC. I mean, I think that's exactly what they did. I think they did a really good strategy in the offseason compared to some of the other teams who just went out to whatever the best chip player was. I think they used what made the most sense for their team and their strategy, and Omir fits that perfectly. He's only 6'7", and he plays a lot bigger than that. He plays huge. I mean, we're talking about a guy who averages over 10 rebounds a game. That's good enough for 12th in the nation right now. 6'7", Steve. And then he is also tied for 28th he's in the top 30 in field goal percentage so not only do you have two fantastic guards in pack and wong who can shoot what were you missing you were missing people on the glass you were missing boards you were missing solid good shooting in the paint you're getting that with omir those three are exactly what this team needs you put some good depth around them oh guess guess what miami played 12 players tonight against florida state that's exactly what you need in conference play to get yourself stretched out, ready to go for the deep rest of the conference play, get in the tournament and get ready uh, for March Madness. I really like Miami right now. I am super high on this team. I was high on them at the beginning. I am super high on them now. I don't see anything less than a Sweet 16 from this team. Nothing less. You know, at, at this point, I, I don't see how, how they wouldn't get that far um, unless they would get in some tough you know, bruising games in the conference tournament, but how many bruising teams are there really in the ACC this year? Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, I mean, teams like Pitt are out muscling teams like North Carolina, you know, I mean, Virginia is so great defensively that, okay, you know, I can, they're going to get, they're going to give you troubles, but really, I mean, Miami, if, if they can escape the ACC tournament, relatively unscathed and they're healthy and they're not beat up. Yeah. I mean, a sweet 16 run 
uh, could definitively be in the cards for them at this point. Yeah, I absolutely think so as well. On Saturday, ESPNU, 4 o'clock Eastern, they are going to head and take on Pitt. They're going to go on the road to take on Pitt. Again, Pitt's been a sneaky good team this year. You talk about physical. That's a good way to start off with that and see if they can win against the Panthers. Then they'll finish the year, uh, or finish the month, I should say, not the year, on the 31st, 7 o'clock Eastern, ESPNU, back home against Virginia Tech, another tough team. I think those are probably the two of the toughest teams in the conference, if you will. Virginia Tech started off really hot, uh, fell off a little bit. They've been having a really hard time really hard time in the ACC two and seven, uh, but they were doing great before the conference game started. So you got to think they're going to shake it off eventually. I like this Miami team. I think they have a, a good chance of winning both of those and, and find themselves at the top of the ACC standings when they head into February. However, only 10 games left before the ACC tournament. How crazy is that? When we say that 10 games left. It feels like we were just starting previews just like yesterday, uh, but this Miami team, is really fun. And again, Steve, super high on them. I know you were doing the overrated chat chant uh, at the beginning of the season, but I know I've got you turned over. And I think yeah, not just no. me, I think their gameplay has really proved otherwise. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm actually toying with trying to go see the game here at Pitt because I live in Pittsburgh. I mean, I, I, the Peterson Event Center, you have to train for a marathon to get there, depending on where you park, because I mean, it's way up on a hill and it's, I mean, it, it, it's tough to get there. For, for an old geezer like me, but I mean, I'm really toying with it because I want to, I think Miami's one of those teams that, okay, it's fun to watch them on TV, but if you're like a basketball junkie like you and I are to see them live and see the dynamic that maybe, you know, you know in three dimension there rather than two dimension on a screen, I, I, I think I, I might actually, you know, I don't mind coughing up the bucks. But I might risk that, you know, walking up Cardiac Hill, a, a risk heart attack number three to get up there and try to watch uh, th this Miami team against a, a very surprising pit team. As long as you got your snowshoes, I think you'll be just fine. Let <laughs> us know your thoughts about the Hurricanes. Do you, are you as high as them uh, as I am? Do you think that this team can go as far as the Sweet 16 or even farther? I mean, I've, I'm going to keep that down. I'm going to put it out in a tweet and everything today, make sure it's posted. So if I ha if I have to live by my bad takes later on, so be it. But I'm going to put that in social media cement, if you will, Steve, after this one. Let us know your thoughts in the comment description below about this Miami team and the rest of the ACC. Hit like and subscribe while you're there. And thanks for watching. Slash are you.